curator of ichthyology, and the film we're about to see is uh, uh, a sea change, uh, Imagine a World Without Fishes. Now, clearly, as curator of fishes at the American Museum, I have a very vested interest in this. But I think, um, I've seen this film now a couple of times. I find it absolutely terrific. It's uh, incredibly moving, um, depressing in some ways, um, but also very hopeful. Um, and I think as um, you'll hear people talking in this movie, um, first of all, this is a, a huge problem, and it's a problem that has kind of gone underneath the radar. It's, kind of, it's called the, the other side of climate change, you know, and it really is, but it has gone under the radar. So this film is doing a terrific service in bringing this to a broad audience's attention. The other thing is that, um, as one of the protagonists who you'll meet uh, both in the film and on the panel, um, really has as his central mission is understanding that to, to really mediate any change, you must have knowledge. And this film is, is in many ways, his search for knowledge, and in, in that search, he, he gives that knowledge to us. So it's, it really is a wonderful opportunity, and I'm very proud to be able to <coughs> introduce um, to you, um, first of all, the, the, the co-producer of this wonderful film, and that's Susan Kern Rockefeller. Now, Susan has a lifelong, it is a lifelong ocean advocate. Um, she's chair of the Ocean Council of Oceana, and she's also a filmmaker in her own right. She has a film that's going to be airing on HBO quite soon called Making the Crooked Straight. But that's not what we're going to be talking about today. Um, so I will see you all again. I'm going to be on the panel. And with that, uh, welcome. And I would like to ask Susan to come up and say a few words about the film. About the film. Thanks. Well, welcome, everyone, to the New York screening of The Sea Change. It is wonderful to have this screening in collaboration with the American Museum of Natural History, Oceana, and Nietzsche Films. As, ocean, um, as all of us love our oceans, we spend our time there, sometimes in the summer. Um, many people have memories of wonderful times by the sea and the sand. I, too, was really um, surprised and uh, actually horrified, quite horrified, when I read the article by uh, Elizabeth Colbert called The Darkening Sea in The New Yorker, which really uh, brought awareness to me about ocean acidification as being one of the biggest threats to our Earth. Um, as a tagline for a sea change, we call it Imagine a World with No Fish. And if you think about the amount of people, millions of people rely on fish for their major protein, and millions of people will continue to rely on it in the coming years. So co-producing this film woke me up to the perils of the sea, and it wasn't just from the top down. Most of us think about some of the problems of the sea having to do with overfishing. And this really looks at the changing chemistry of our oceans. And what you'll learn about when you see this film is, is something called the pteropod, the small building blocks <laughs> of the ocean. And um, basically learning about this knowledge uh, prompted me to become a much more serious activist, and that's why I became the, the chairwoman of the Ocean Council for Oceana, uh, with the hopes to educate and activate and illuminate people to really start helping to save our oceans. What I'd like to do is introduce Barbara Ettinger and Sven Visby, if they could please stand. I actually can't see them. Oh, good. Sven. Barbara was able to take a very depressing and frightening subject matter to the 